Shiny happy people. We posted a poll on our Instagram asking all of our girls find followers if you wanted us to talk about this new docu-series that I'm sure you have heard of. And the response was overwhelming. We got so many more like votes on a poll than I think we have in years. And so Kristen and I were texting and we were like, well, the people have spoken. I guess we're going to make a video and share our thoughts. (laughs) Yeah. And I don't think we were really planning on sharing our thoughts originally. We both watched the entire docuseries. So if you're not familiar, it's a four-part docuseries all about shiny, happy people. And I think what's the tagline is like Duggar family secrets, something like that. And Uh it's all about the Duggar family. So 19 kids and counting, they were on TLC for years. Many people have heard of their name and it kind of follows their story, but more specifically takes a deep dive into the the programs that the Duggar family, that they were involved in, that they grew up in, like the homeschooling curriculum. And so much of the docuseries was centered around that and the teachings of that organization, which is called IBLP, the Institute in Basic Basic Life Principles, Bill Gothard. Um, So yeah, it kind of, I wasn't expecting that angle as much. I didn't realize that's where they were going with the docuseries. So that was kind of interesting to me. Um, But yeah, that's what the whole thing is about is just exposing, you know, the secrets of the Duggar family, exposing the ministry of IBLP and kind of digging into it from the perspective of the people who made the docuseries. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I just want to hear from you, Kristen, like your initial, very short, because we're going to get into it all, but like initial reaction after watching the (laughs) docuseries. Well, I honestly thought it was it was really well done from like a um, production standpoint, like the way they created yeah. it, the way they told the story. It was, it felt very compelling. I was intrigued from the beginning to the end watching it. So I feel like the way it was created was well done. Was the story yeah. well told? That's another question. <laughs> Interesting. Um, so I, I was very interested. We obviously have some personal experience with some of the things that were talked about in the docuseries. And so... I did feel like it was presented in a really intriguing way. Um, yeah, I felt like it was sure. definitely very dramatized, though, very yeah. sensationalized, meant to stir up emotions. I mean, it's entertainment, right? So like, yeah. I felt all of that. And I think I walked away with some things that I appreciated about it, which I want to share, yeah. and then some things that I did not appreciate about it. What about yeah, you? Totally. Yeah, I mean, I after watching it, I was actually kind of a taken back because... I had received so many DMs and and literally like text messages from good friends like asking if I was okay and uh, people like checking in on me on Instagram because as we'll get into, Girl Define had two very, very, very short clips in this docuseries that they pulled from YouTube. And um, I left the docuseries one feeling like I'm totally okay. Like I like this didn't hurt my feelings or offend me in any way. I think because I went into it like you did, where I knew first and foremost, like they're probably (laughs) just capitalizing on a story that they know will make them a ton of money. Like at the end of the day, that's what entertainment Mm -hmm. truly is about. Like these people want to make money. So I think I went into it with that perspective. And so it made it very like not personal for me, even though I'm like, yeah, I have a lot of experience in some of these programs and what they're talking about and can kind of relate somewhat on some level, like in a small way. Um, but I just, I was kind of like, yeah, just looking, looking at it through the lens of entertainment. These people are trying to make money, um, just more of a discerning eye first and foremost, but then was also like, yeah, actually though, like they're, they're bringing up some really, really important, hard topics that we need to talk about. And I do agree with some of the, um, terrible things that, had been done in the past. And I, you know, I, uh, to me, I'm like, yeah, let's talk about this. This is really important. And Mm -hmm. I, I'm glad we're bringing this conversation up. So uh, yeah, that's like a really long answer of, yeah, I'm glad that I'm glad they made the documentary because I think that this is a chance for us as Christians to discuss and talk and like, let's get into this. This is important, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And bring other perspectives like the documentary, the docu-series, I guess it was so, to me felt like it was very much from from a like they were trying to drive a certain narrative obviously For sure. anytime 100%. you have a documentary a movie you are driving your narrative the narrative that you want to present and to me that was very obvious um, oh, yeah. it, it felt like they were trying to have the obligatory people on who were maybe going to bring another perspective or a different angle but then at the end of the day I felt like the documentary very much was focused on driving For sure. the narrative that they wanted to drive and the agenda and the angle and even the conclusion felt yeah. very much one-sided from from someone watching it who 
was involved in some of those things, like talking about IBLP, the Institute in Basic Le- Basic Life Principles. So it's an entire, it was an entire movement started by Bill Gothard. Um, if you've seen the docuseries, then you know way more about it than most people. But if you haven't, then maybe go watch it and you'll know what we're talking about. Yeah. But it was just a an organization under a Christian label that had tons of different programs for from kids to young adults to conferences that whole entire families would go to, um, tons and tons of just resources and curriculum stuff to equip Christian families. And then more specifically, as time went on, it became stuff to equip um, homeschool families more specifically. And so yeah. growing up in a homeschool family, um, we were involved in some of those programs. So we did go to some of those conferences. We did attend some of those programs. We were never members. We were never deeply ingrained in the program. We never did any of the curriculum, anything like that. But we did have some involvement. And so watching it, I was like, okay, this is really interesting to see these yeah. testimonies Um, This anecdotal experience of people looking on and saying, okay, this is what it was for me, and then painting that organization in that one particular light as if that was everybody's experience or as if every homeschool family was involved or every conservative Christian thought this way. And so I think it's important for us to bring a different perspective and to say, well, we were involved in some of the programs. In fact, we did you meet Bill Gothard? Because I remember meeting him once. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So like even meeting the man, you know, who's like the big bad man for this whole thing, like he was kind of a god in that arena. Um, And I remember feeling that like, wow, he was the leader of the entire program. Like it was like meeting the president is how it felt. Yeah, for sure. I don't I didn't really care about him personally. I was just like, whatever. It wasn't a big deal. But yeah, so I think it's it'll be interesting for us to weigh in on this because we do have yeah. a little bit more of a unique angle and we don't feel to this day like we were traumatized by our experience no. like so many people are sharing. Well, yeah, and um, I think that's why we, as we watch something like this, like, you know, emotions are high and people are just like on all sides, like just going at it and like attacking each other, even amongst Christians, we're like going at each other. And I've seen so much of that, like just on forums and in Facebook and on Instagram and people just like, you know, like going crazy about this. And I just think like, let's take a step back. Like, let's let our emotions settle a little bit. And, you know, like ultimately at the end of the day, like, especially as Christians, like we should be concerned first and foremost, like about like Christ and the gospel and all of that. And not so much like, well, you know, I don't know, just our own uh, us. Um, but so I think when you watch it, like just use discernment and and realize like this is a documentary or a docuseries made by non-believers who clearly, like Kristen said, kind of had an agenda with it. Did true things come out that are really important? Absolutely. So let's use this as a conversation starter. Um, but just like these other docuseries that come out about or reality shows, you know, it's like people want, we as humans like love to see like a big fall from grace, a big failure. Like it's sad, but we find so much entertainment and also a lot of self-righteousness in that. Like we are so much better than those people. So I think if you're like, I, I left the fundamentalist movement, like don't swing to the other side where now you're going to that prideful side again and saying like, I am so much better than them. Like they thought they were so much better. Actually, I'm so much better. I think we can just do the exact same thing Mm -hmm. that we don't like. Um, So I think it's important that we approach this conversation with like a lot of discernment, a lot of humility. And let's just like, you know, in our own like lives, just be prayerful and be going to the word and saying like, God, what do you want me to learn from this? Like, how can I grow closer to you through this? How can I make your name more known because of this? How can I be a part of like, you know, getting rid of the the wrong, the bad, the sin, exposing that, but then drawing closer to you? Like, I don't want it to become just this big thing like, oh, about us or about certain people, like the Duggars, whoever. It's like, no, like that's as Christians, that that shouldn't really be the focus of it. So I don't know. I just think we all need to like take a minute (laughs) wherever you stand on it and just like take a big breath and like, okay, like, I don't know. (laughs) I just feel like emotions are hot right now. I don't know. Yes, they're really hot. Well, it's, they're really hot and it's so easy to want to become the judge, like to look at other people and just like, okay, now I'm the judge. I'm the arbiter of truth. I will decide what's right and wrong, Yeah. but it, it never comes from us, whether it's a, an extremely conservative movement, whether it's a total like atheist movement, whatever it is, like a, some strong political movement, it, the truth we know as believers, it comes from the gospel, like from yeah. the word of God, like that is where truth is found. And the position of the gospel is humility. It's yeah. not pride. It's not that we are the 
judges. It's that God is the judge ultimately. And does he give us wisdom? Does he give us discernment? Do we filter what we see through this biblical worldview? Yes, but we look to God's word ultimately as our source of truth. And that posture of humility, I think, like you're saying, is so important in this conversation that we don't swing to the other side. And now we're taking on this entire totally. perspective, like this is entire stance of pride, but it's just from yeah. another angle. Yeah. And just okay, to be clear, so- because so many people have asked, we we did not know any clips of Girl Define were going to be in it. I had no idea the docu-series existed until like days before it came out. I had no idea Girl Define was in it. Kristen didn't either. So if people are like, oh, did you know your clips are going to be in it? Like, no, we we came to watching this Shiny Happy People docu-series just like the rest of you. Like we heard of it days before it came out. And then we were like, oh, and then we were like, oh, there's some clips of us in it. Um. I only got head nods in it. I was like this. Kristen got words. I was just like this the whole time. So that was yes, my big moment. <laughs> we had two two very <laughs> tiny clips. It was in episode four. So if you're like, oh, you're interested in, in seeing us in it, you can watch episode four of the four-part docuseries. And it was just two tiny clips amongst a whole bunch of other Christian influencers, Christian ministries, young people, millennials for the most part, from what I could tell. And it was basically that part of the docu- documentary was in some ways saying like, oh, and the, you know, Bill Gothard's his toxic teaching, it continues on. And this is the next generation of people kind of carrying the torch forward. And it's just hilarious to me because half of those people, and maybe even more, like have no clue who Bill Gothard even is. Yes. Like, what? And so that was kind of interesting to me, like the people they chose. And like, I'm like, yeah. the messages that I know most of those people that they featured, like their messages are nothing like the teachings of Bill Gothard yes. or anything even close was, to that. So that was funny. It was kind of comical. Get into that. Yeah. So like, maybe we start by talking about, you've yeah. already mentioned, like, you did appreciate some things about the documentary yeah. that it wasn't just, okay, this is horrible. We shouldn't yeah. watch this, but like, no, it's worth watching. It's worth discussing. In fact, there were some things that were really good that we appreciate that yeah. were exposed that they did bring to the light. And so I don't know, maybe for you, share some of those. And then I have some of my thoughts yeah. too. Yeah. So some, some of the things that I appreciated and thought were important were like, yes, there was, um, in any organization where the gospel doesn't, isn't the, the first like thing forward and where it's not truly about Jesus, it becomes about man made rules, which I think IBLP really, um, like was lacking in a gospel center perspective and really became about like a workspace righteousness. And you hear, I mean, I remember hearing so much of that in the teaching, like looking back, I'm like, oh, that really was present of just, you do these things and God will bless you. You don't do these things or you do wrong things and God will curse you. I know Ginger Volo uh, Duggar talked a lot about that in her book. Um, And so when you do that, it does leave a lot of room for people in power, authority, you know, to Mm -hmm. um, kind of like control other people or abuse other people, manipulate and the the stories that were shared about certain people's experiences being um you know abused or manipulated um that is so awful and so heartbreaking and especially that it was done in the name of Christ is just the worst um mm-hmm. and we you know we know people who have those experiences that wasn't my experience or your experience necessarily mm-hmm. but um the fact that that this program did kind of create that structure for that to happen Mm -hmm. is awful. And I think that that part of the documentary and them exposing that and giving um, victims a voice to share, I think is crucial. And I think that that we need to approach that with a ton of compassion and just our heart should break just like God's heart breaks when Mm -hmm. his word is misused and when people are harmed and um, wronged. I mean, that is like that, that is so heartbreaking. So I, I really was like, just, uh, I, I hate that that happened. And I know that happens in all sorts of families and organizations. It's not just like conservative movements, but because it's yeah. like the name of Christ that's being used to do that is just awful. So I, I was really mm-hmm. grateful that they were exposing them. Yeah. I think some of, one of the other things that they exposed, which is true across the board, whether it's a Christian-based organization or not, when you place one man as yes. the head honcho of the entire program and everybody is now kind of trained in a sense to look to this one man as the man who has the answers, the man who has all the wisdom, the man who is 
creating all of the programs, all of the curriculum, and he's almost upheld. Like, not like he yeah. is God, but like he almost has this special in with God. You know, almost like I heard some people describe it, um, even Ginger Volo Duggar described it as almost like he was a prophet. You know, the yes. people uh-huh. looked to him. Exactly. Um, specifically, I'm talking about Bill Gothard in the IBLP movement. Um, but that's so true for any organization that even if it's like a cult that has nothing to do with the Bible or it's like some other sort of teaching and there's one man, I think you can almost guarantee that there are going to be problems, that there's going to be abuse, that there's going to be secrets, that people are going to, um, especially if it's Christian based, like IBLP was. And I will just say for the record, in that docuseries, they make it seem like every single thing that was taught that was um, promoted in every program was so cultish and so evil. And so like, it wasn't like there were a lot of things that actually were biblical, but there was so much that wasn't. And so it's kind of like, okay, parsing through that and even thinking back on my experience, like, okay, that's interesting to think about the things that were not biblical in how they were, like how we were told to live them out. Like you're saying so many of the man-made rules for just like yeah, legalism sure. or like the way you should live morally that maybe is taking is like adding a lot to scripture. Um, But yeah, there were a lot of things that were, that were biblically based and that were true. So it's just, we have to be discerning in anything. But I think the biggest problem was that the entire organization was centered around one man. And I don't know if that's how they intended it from the beginning or if that's just like how, because it became so popular people, families, I think were genuinely coming out of like the sexual, sexual revolution, kind of like the hippie days and kids rebelling and sex, drugs and rock and roll. And I think parents were genuinely like, we need need a good program for our kids. Like we need good teaching. We want them to be around like-minded Christians. And so I think many, many families had good hearts and that they wanted community. They wanted, you know, a safe place for their children, quote unquote. Um, But then I think the problem escalated as time went on and it did become so centered around one man and everyone rallied around that person. And then it just became, you know, you have to protect the image, you have to protect the man. And then that's when I think abuse started happening behind the scenes and people Mm. wouldn't talk about it because it would ruin the image of the organization. And that's when you know you've strayed because it's no longer about Jesus isn't the center. Like you said, the gospel isn't the centered. It's more about protecting the image of the organization and just doing whatever you can to protect the image of the man that you follow. Yeah. I really appreciated like the name actually, I really like because it's Mm -hmm, something mm -hmm. that I think a lot of Christians can fall into is, um, you know, especially as you become like, I'm a parent now you're a parent and there can be a temptation to look a certain way, even on social media, present a certain way of like, you know, put togetherness and not be honest and not be even with people in your own church and your own community about the reality of our hearts. And like, instead of needing to be perfect to get to God, it's like, that's the very gospel. We are not perfect. We are not shiny. We are not like happy on our own. Um, we need Christ. And at the end of the day, it's like his perfection. So like he is perfect. And then we get to be adopted into his family. And so I think, um, like tearing down this whole idea of like, okay, we just like, you know, we need to have these perfect families because that's Mm -hmm. what's going to get people to Christ. Like, no, it's our weaknesses and Christ's strength and goodness and perfection that draws people to Christ. Like we aren't, we aren't Christ, you know? And so I, I just really, really appreciated that and is something as I now raise my own kids that I don't want to fall into of trying to like have this perfect image. Um, and so I think that was definitely worth calling out. Um, I'm curious your thoughts though. Like the whole thing really was about like the Duggars and IBLP. I feel like that was the focus of the conversation. I think, you know, um, you know, Jill Duggar was the main Duggar that talked in the documentary and, um, Ginger Duggar Volo, you know, she recently released a book, um, that, I mean, we did a podcast episode with her. So it seems like some of the Duggars are kind of like coming up as adults and starting to share their story. And so my thoughts on that whole part, um, you know, their family was on reality TV and a lot of them, they started as kids. And so they didn't really have a choice for their lives to be completely public. Uh, and so, I know there's disagreement, like, should she be sharing in this way? Should Ginger even be sharing in the way that she's sharing so publicly? And my take on all that is, is that, you know, I think the parents, they chose kind of like the path that they set their family on a very public path. And now that the kids are adults, I think that it's perfectly fair. And I actually think it's good for them to be able to have like their own opportunity to share as adults, as marrieds, as their own families to say, Hey, this, these are my thoughts, whether we agree or disagree with every last thing they're saying, I think it's really important. And so I found it 
I personally didn't agree with the part the Duggar family released a statement saying like, oh, this should all happen behind closed doors. Like I personally didn't agree with that because I I feel like, well, you didn't give them a choice and you put them before everyone their whole lives. And now that they're sharing and it's not making you look positive, now you don't like it. Like they didn't have a choice how they looked in these videos and stuff. So just as like an adult in the similar age range, in that way, I um, like I said, whether you agree with everything Jill says or not, I personally think that's a positive that she has the opportunity to share, just like Ginger has the opportunity to share it. And mm-hmm. to me, I think that's a good thing. But I don't know. That's just my my perspective. I don't know. What, how did you feel about that kind of Yeah. No, I think it's perfectly fair. Situation. I think that – yeah, I think it's perfectly fair that you are – your whole life is on reality TV. Some of the hardest, darkest moments, especially for some of the girls with the abuse they suffered and then having yeah. to – give statements publicly and talk about it, which it sounded like from the documentary, like Jill wasn't really wanting to, but felt like obligated to because of the, the show and just the image. Yeah. And needing to speak up. And so I just feel so bad that they had to go through that and then had to do it publicly and share their heart and share in a very emotional and broken place where it just didn't seem like they really wanted to. So now on the other side, it does seem perfectly fair and right that they would get to as adults, like you said, as married women with kids get to say, this is where we're at and this is how we feel. And this is what we think about these things. And then, you know, I really appreciate my whole conversation that I did have with Ginger. Um, I don't know what episode number it is. We'll link it below, but go back and listen to that because she shares in depth her whole, just her personal experience of growing up in the family Growing up in the movement of IBLP, um, the teachings of Bill Gothard, how that impacted her and her view of Christianity, her view of always trying to measure up, live this perfect life that would please God in every way, be a shiny, happy person, but ultimately how that left her so anxious, so fearful. And it wasn't until she understood the true gospel that it's not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but it's God's grace, his mercy. Um, Christ's work on the cross, that's what saved us. It's because we're not enough, because we're not shiny enough. And she talks all about that. And it's so refreshing. Um, Just her entire testimony and how she finally found freedom. And it wasn't freedom by breaking away. You know, the freedom didn't come just just by breaking away from IBLP or just, you know, thinking differently than maybe her parents. It came from her heart seeing the gospel, seeing the beauty of Jesus, seeing his redemptive work, seeing the freedom that comes from his forgiveness and walking in the newness of Christ, living wholeheartedly for him and not based on works, receiving his love because it's an unconditional gift from the Father um, because of Christ's work. That is the freedom that she experienced. Yeah. And so I just love that so much. It's so powerful. And I'm so grateful that she wrote her book, that yeah. she's speaking up, that she's sharing, and she's not swinging to another side of just completely sure. taking on maybe like a victim uh, mindset, a victim lifestyle of woe is me. I can't believe this. these things happened to me. And then kind of just retaliating and getting totally. angry. Like she's using it for good and she's using it to... Um, like it, God has just used it for good in her life and yeah. you can see the transformation, the freedom, the yeah. peace that she has as a result of turning yeah. to Christ. So I think there is yeah. good coming from them speaking up. Yeah. I think the, one of the most positive things that I can think of is that like one, I, I am so grateful there. They, not that I think, and in, I enjoy hearing about the terrible things that Josh Duggar did. Like I could barely even like think about it cause it makes my heart like crushed in a million pieces, like having kids, like, and, you know, you can watch a docu-series. I won't go into what, you know, he did, but he's in jail. And I think that it's just a reminder that you cannot like put on enough good actions. You can't put on the right outfit. You can't dress a certain way to like fix the heart. Like you have to be transformed by Christ. And Josh Duggar was clearly not. And, you know, just did a lot of evil. And, you know, even though he looked like a shiny, happy person and looked and could say all the right things, it's like, that doesn't matter. Yeah. Like it's about the heart. Um, and so I, I appreciate that they bring that story to light because I think we need to remember that. Like we, you, you just can't act your way into goodness. You can't look your way into like righteousness, you know, um, you can look absolutely great and still be very, um, you know, I don't know, very, very away from God. Um, I think the stuff they also uh, brought up about Jim Bob, the dad, um, if you hear crying in the background, (laughs) that's my kids down there. Kristen and I are doing this very early in the morning and we've got a house full of kiddos. And so it's, it is what it is. Um, But if, you know, what Jill is saying, and I think the direct testimonies of people saying, this is for me, what happened? I think we, Ex, you know, choose to say for you, not not speculating on other people, but what they're saying about them. I think it's worth believing. And 
you know, Jill is saying for seven and a half years of her adult life, she didn't receive a single penny from the show. To me, that is really messed up and really weird. And I was like thinking of our family and I'm like, if we were on a show, I'm like, oh my goodness, like our dad would probably have like set up bank accounts and like for years, even as kids would have been putting money in that for us, like aside, not to compare, but just thinking like that is so like, that struck me as like very bizarre and really um, just made me feel really bad for them that they had you know, even monetarily, like they didn't receive anything from like having their entire lives put forth, you know, and actually in some ways were struggling financially. It's like, that was ridiculous to me, you know? And so I think in that way, like, I'm glad she had a chance to say that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we've talked a lot about the things that we maybe appreciated about the show, yeah. uh, things that we found were positive outcomes because the show did expose some good things and yeah. exposing justice, you know, and like you said, people like Josh Duggar who ha say all the right things, ha look the right way, you know, can play the part, but then your heart can truly be so far away from God. It just speaks to the reality that no system, no program, no curriculum, no teaching that is outside of the gospel can transform. It doesn't yeah. matter how good you look on the outside. And that that was a wake up call, even for me as a mom now with my boys to yes. think like, it's not about finding the right program, getting the best five-step curriculum, you know, whatever it is, like getting involved in just the right group. It's like, no, the Lord has to change our hearts. He has yeah. to work in my heart, in my children's heart, my husband's heart. It's like, if your heart is far away from the Lord, it doesn't matter the programs you're in. It doesn't matter how conservative, whatever, like you can do everything you think is right. Um, you can even try to safeguard and protect your kids as much as possible. But if their hearts are not changed by the Lord, then their hearts, yes. then it's just going to be a facade. It's not going to be genuine. Yeah, and so just exactly, that reminder for me, it's like, it's not about finding the perfect program, although we are thankful for biblically based programs and curriculum. I am thankful for all of that. Yeah. Christian community, gospel centered churches, like a hundred percent. But just remembering, like it has to be the Lord changing the yeah. heart. And that has to be the focus for why we do what we do. Our motivation has to be yeah. fueled by the gospel, or it is just gonna be a facade. Yeah. So moving in, I know we yeah. <laughs> we have a lot more to cover. Um, things yeah. that we maybe felt like were not balanced or were yeah. very one-sided, the way that they portrayed with, yeah. certain groups of people, things that we disagree with in the documentary. Yeah. I'll let you kick it off with your thoughts on that. Okay. Yeah. I mean, okay. So our friends, Paul and Morgan, they created a whole video on it. They had firsthand experience um, with the producers and stuff. And so um, I thought that was interesting. We'll link their video. You can wa go watch their experience as well. Um, but I think their experience tied into kind of like my take on the negative aspect because it kind of goes together. So they shared Paul and Morgan, they specifically had in their contract to where they were able to speak about it afterward. They changed that in their contract, which I'm glad they did. But their experience with the creators of this docuseries, was very deceitful and very um mm. the the d producers and directors whoever like literally just lied to them to get them on there knowing full well that they wanted to make Paul and Morgan look really terrible and look like they're trying to carry on this you know horrible you know message to the next generations and stuff but the emails the calls that Paul and Morgan had with these producers were the exact opposite the producers and directors were basically telling them like no this is really a 360 look at Christianity this is not like a hit piece all of that and so in some ways I'm like you know, that kind of, to me is like, yeah, it shows you where the heart of the producers, the creators were, they weren't trying to make Christianity look good in any way. They really were trying to find a story and use an angle to take down conservative Christianity and to say, look, because this fringe movement, this specific organization was so bad, all of homeschooling, all of Christianity, all of it is so bad. And they're all just crazy and wackos. And like, we need to just completely like, unless you're deconstructing and completely rejecting all of that, like you're a part of the problem. And it's like, whoa, what in the world? Like that is ridiculous and so extreme. And so the way that they just lumped every single homeschooler, every single conservative Christian into one boat and are basically like, if you are not deconstructing, you are a part of the problem. Like that whole messaging was ridiculous. I mean, we know many homeschoolers. We know many conservative Christians who had completely different experiences, very positive experiences homeschooling, very positive experiences as a Christian, and who are really following after Christ, doing very well, and who want to homeschool their kids as well in a good way. I mean, it's like that part really was ridiculous. And I think anyone, if you use discernment looking on, can see the angle that they were taking with that. And I think that's just kind of slimy and kind of like, uh, like okay, that... I think you could have done a better job making your point, but it it just really gave you a way that you really don't like conservative Christians and you really have like a thing against them. Um, and so to me, it just kind of showed their true hearts in that way, which I think was 
it was that part felt kind of weak to me because it was so obvious. So that yes, was, a, it was something I didn't like. <laughs> yeah. So you did you weren't passionate about that at all. Not even. <laughs> I just yeah, I, I think it's kind of I just thought it was kind of ridiculous and also but kind mm-hmm. of comical at the same time. Like I'm not mad about it. I'm just kind of like 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 you just made your your mo- like your your heart motivation about this like so obvious. Like you really don't like us, we get it, you know? Yeah. Like okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and it seemed very obvious that they were bringing in like Jill Jill Duggar to to say like look, we have a Duggar, she's sharing her experience to almost validate everything else that they were saying. Um all of the things that yes. we feel like were not balanced. We're we're saying they were saying this fringe movement they weren't calling it they were they were acting like it was all conservatives, all I homeschool know. families. All Christians basically were a part of this, but in reality, you know, we did attend some of the programs. We were also very involved in our homeschool community in Texas. We had a lot of friends who knew nothing about IBLP, who had never heard the name Bill Gothard. Most Um, didn't know. (laughs) We played sports. We wore makeup. We wore pants. I mean, our whole like dating experience was not, you know, the same where you have the third wheel always in tow, Duggar style. Like our our whole experience was so different. And yet we also did go to some of the programs, attend some of the conferences. And we were able to say like, okay, there were even back then, I remember thinking like, okay, there are some things I don't really agree with and some things that are kind of weird. And even our parents were like, eh, we're not really into that. And we're not going to uphold Bill Gothard on a pedestal. He was never upheld as any sort of like amazing man in our home. It was just like, oh, great. There's some... Yeah, there's great community. Like we could meet some people, like make some friends, learn some things. And then we would throw out the things we didn't want, you know, the things that we felt like weren't balanced or biblical. And then we would take the things that we felt like were. And so our experience was so different than the the fringe experience of some people. And we're not going yeah. to like everyone has their own experience. So those who shared in the docu series, it they have their experience. And for some of them, they experience tragic things at you know, abuse at the hands of this organization, of this man. And I am saying that is a horrible thing. I am so heartbroken that happened. Um, that's awful. Again, I think it happens when you place any man on a pedestal and make him to be almost like a godlike person yeah. for the organization. But what I didn't appreciate was how in the docuseries, the most of the people, 95% of the people that they had on there that were interviewed were people who were against conservatives who grew up in the IBLP movement, but are now deconstructing, who are in many ways turning away from the faith, um, who are really attacking homeschoolers and homeschool families and anyone who is still, you know, not completely deconstructing. They're basically, like you said, looking to those people and saying, well, now you're part of the problem. You're carrying on the torch. You're continuing this cult. But where are the other voices? Like, where are the other people? in the docu-series saying like, okay, hey, I was in that program or I was a part of that conference and here's my experience. It didn't ruin my life in the same way. Um, You know, I never suffered any sort of abuse. I was never felt manipulated in any way. I felt like I had free will. I can make choices. Like I could take the good and leave the bad and I moved on with my life and I'm doing just fine. Like there's no, there was no balance of other perspectives, which is why we're thankful that we can even share this and say like, it didn't wreck everyone's life in the way that they're portraying it. And in fact, it was a very small fringe movement within Christian conservative, Christian conservative Christianity, whatever. It wasn't the majority like they make it out to be. Yeah. I thought there, the strongest part of the documentary was probably the direct testimony. I thought the weakest part of the documentary were like the experts because it was like, they specifically chose people who are already looking in on this movement and like hate it and who are like maybe a YouTuber and they just really do not like conservative Christians. And it's like, you're putting them up there and showcasing them as the expert. Like, of course, they're going to have nothing but negative things to say. Like, you know, obvious, you know? So it was like, to me, it's like, okay, that was kind of weak in my opinion. Like, bring in some people who can really actually poke holes. Like, that's why you have to look at the docuseries and say, it's for entertainment. It's a moneymaker, you know? It's supposed to be sensationalized because clearly, like, you know, they're not, you know, they're not, bringing on really strong experts. They're specifically finding people who can really drive a narrative home. And even, you know, specifically bringing on like our friends, Paul and Morgan, they're like, you know, specifically bringing them on. And Paul and Morgan said they filmed in for literally were interviewed for four and a half hours. And it was like two and a half minutes of what they did was shown. And it's like one tiny clip about like, what are your thoughts on submission? It's like, oh my goodness, of course, they're trying to show a certain perspective. Even Alex Harris, he was on there. He wrote an article about it on the Gospel Coalition. And he was saying, you know, I spent the whole day there. And afterward, it's like, well, I wonder how they'll portray me. And I think that's, he kind of takes it with a grain of salt. Like, 
okay, <laughs> it is what it is, you know? And I think that's kind of how you have to approach it. Um, I would say the other part that I thought was kind of random to me was the whole Joshua generation part. Like I had never heard of the Joshua yeah. generation. I was, I didn't know what it was. I was asking Dave, my husband, I was like, is it Joshua generation? Like people, Josh Harris, like people who fought, like were influenced by him. And Dave was like, no, like Joshua from the Bible, you know? And I was like, oh, like that's how much I didn't know what the Joshua generation was. So then to be shown clips like us and Paul and Morgan and Nate and Sutton and Mrs. Midwest and people like that, YouTubers saying like, we're carrying on this message was like, wait, <laughs> really? And this is news to me. Like I had no idea when all of us as like YouTubers or influencers, whatever they want to call us, we're all looking back and saying, we disagree with a lot of what IBLP did. We disagree yeah. and <clears throat> with a lot of what the Duggar family did. We're in agreement on a lot of this. Like we're actually on the same side on a lot of this, but we just disagree that dis deconstructing is the answer. We think that like as Ginger said, you can disentangle and go towards the true gospel and leave behind a false gospel. So that was just kind of like, crazy to me. I'm like, you're acting, I don't know. It's just like, no, here's our voice. And what we're saying is we agree with you on a lot, but we don't think we have to completely deconstruct. We think that we can leave behind the bad and go toward what the Bible and the gospel actually says. <laughs> so that yeah, whole segment can, was random. <laughs> like, and we can hold on to our faith. Like the thing yeah. I, that I thought was so ironic was at the end, their big conclusion felt like it was, yeah. and look at all of these people, this next generation of Christians, like look at how they're using their voice. They're trying to be trendy. They're trying to be cool. And they're trying to further the message of Jesus. And it was almost like, oh no, how could Christians want to further the message of Jesus? It's like, wait, what? Like as Bible believing Christians who go to God's word, I mean, they even had a clip of me in there saying something like, like we go to God's word, we go to the Bible. I'm like, like, yeah, I will say that all day. And they were trying to portray that, like, look at this next generation. Mm. They're trying to make it trendy to read the Bible, to be a Christian, to be a conservative. <laughs> it's like, and the problem is, yes. um, yeah, that's actually the point. Go out into the, all the world and make disciples. Like, that is the point of the gospel is that we are living out the gospel in our own lives. And then we're taking it out into the world. We're sharing the gospel. We're sharing Jesus. We're, we're preaching Christ. Like, that is the yeah. point. And so I thought that was hilarious that they were painting that as, like, look at what's happening now. And it was like, bum, 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 yes. bum, like this Joshua generation going forward and proclaiming the gospel. Like, yeah. <laughs> actually, that's what we want to be doing. And we're thankful that we can have a voice that we can say, yes. we are speaking out and we are sharing what we believe. And thankfully, we've grown a lot. We've changed a lot. We can look back and see the things that we do not want to hold on to anymore, the things that were misbalanced, out of balance, the things that were not centered on the gospel. Like you said, we can disentangle the truth from the lies and we can move forward in the truth and hopefully continue yeah. growing, continuing disentangling, but we don't have to throw everything out. We're not interested in throwing out everything that we've ever known. Every, you know, the gospel, the Bible, Christianity, conservatism, like there are good things. And actually we believe tr truth is found in the word of God. And we're going to hold yeah. on to that and hopefully continue to disentangle and become more and more centered on the mm -hmm. true gospel. But I'm thankful that there is a generation of young people who are speaking out, who are creating YouTube channels, making TikToks, you know, creating podcasts and talking about a lot of current issues, yeah. political issues from a gospel perspective. There's more now than I feel like there ever was. So to me, I'm yeah. looking out and I'm thinking, wow, I feel like it's more balanced now than it's ever been as far as what we're saying, what we're hearing. And I'm so thankful that so many have been able to disentangle tangle and the message is so much more gospel centered now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I want people to know too, just like we, <clears throat> we're just humans, just like you all. And I think we all, like I said, need to have that um, humble approach. Like we're sharing, our, we choose to share our thoughts, Kristen and I on a podcast on YouTube. Um, but we are not like the Bible. We are not God. Yeah. We never want to be your final authority in any way. Just like Bill Gothard, people looked to him for answers and followed his teachings blindly. That's a huge problem. Like, do not ever follow our teachings or whatever, like blindly. Like, yeah. go to scripture. And if you look at scripture and you're like, hey, like, I don't think this quite lines up with what the Bible actually says. Tell us. Like, we want to know. Like, we want to grow and be more in line with God's truth, you know? But if you just disagree with us as a whole, like, you need to deconstruct. Like, well, mm, like, it's probably not going to be the best. <laughs> like, <laughs> we don't agree with that. So I think that you know, this docu-series, the way it ended so hopeless. Like, so what, what do we do? It's basically like deconstruct and then like the universe will catch you and that that's it. It's like, 
how yeah. hopeless is that? Like, I think there's just, you know, that's why I loved Ginger Volo's book because she is like, there is a true gospel. There is a true savior. We don't have to measure up. We don't have to be perfect. We can come with all of our brokenness and imperfection and have this loving savior who gives us this new identity in him who died and rose again um, so that one day we could be in perfect relationship with him and be in his presence and have perfect peace and pleasures forevermore and just like completely be satisfied in him. And to me, it's like, wow, that is so life-giving. That is where hope is found, that eternal perspective, um, less of like, well, okay, there's all these, you know, sinful people in this world and I need to get away from them. But if we still go forward with ourselves, like we're sinful, we're prideful, we are going to, you know, like even if everyone around us was perfect, we have to live with our own hearts. So that part to me was just really, really sad how it ended so, so hopeless. I, I just you know, you just leave feeling really discouraged. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it it just ended with look within yourself, like speak out the to me, the ending was like, use your voice. You know what they were saying in the docuseries, like what Bill Gothard in that generation didn't expect was that we the next generation, we're going to rise up and use our voice and speak. And now we're speaking now we're bringing to light all of the things that were wrong, which there were a lot of things that were wrong. But then it just ended with we're using our voice. And we we're broken. We're trying to somehow find wholeness. The end, you know, and like you said, it just it did end very hopeless. And the truth is that we are all broken. Like I'm broken. You're broken. Every single one of us, we're broken and we're broken because of sin, the sin that we've experienced, the sin that um, has impacted us because of other people's sins, the choices that we've made, the things we've been a part of, like we're all broken in different ways. And the docuseries just kind of leaves you in a state of like, things are broken and that's it. And the answer is to look within yourself, to look within the universe, to speak your truths, to listen to your heart, to follow the voices in your head. But at the end of the day, like, is that really going to land you in a better place long term? Like, do the answers come from within? And I I can say from my own experience, they do not. Like when I follow my own heart, my own thoughts, when I just try to like muster it up and just try to somehow find my own healing, like it doesn't work. I have to go to my savior, to the one who was broken for me, the one who died on a cross, whose body yeah. was broken, who took the consequences of my sin, who took on my shame, took on all of the things that I can't bear in and of myself. He took that on. He bears that for me. And as I look to him, he says that he clothes us in his righteousness as we seek him, as we pursue his forgiveness, as we find redemption in him, in the person of Jesus Christ. That is where hope is found. And they didn't end there. And that wasn't their message. That was not their goal. But I think you're right that it did leave people feeling like, what's next? And what's next is that we don't need to swing to any of these other pendulums, swinging away from IBLP and then swinging to deconstruction, swinging away from the Lord or swinging in any direction outside of Jesus. The person of Jesus Christ is not going to land you in a place where you're truly going to feel whole and happy long-term. Christ is the one who heals us and makes us whole. And I'm so thankful that we can find that wholeness in him. So there is a message of hope and it is found in the person of Jesus Christ. And we just want to make that very clear that that's where our hope comes from. Mm -hmm. And if you're like, wow, I, I watched it. I do have a lot of hurt and pain. I was a part of that. Um, I, I do feel broken. My family, we are now suffering so much because of the way we were raised or what we were taught, the way things turned out. I just want to encourage you to not swing to any extreme looking for answers outside of the gospel of Jesus, because that is what was missing in the IBL, IBLP movement. Yes. And that's what we don't want to miss today. We want to yeah. get it and we want to go to the word because Jesus is where wholeness is found. Mm-hmm. I think my final thought on all of this would be, um, as you are watching this and as you are seeing like, wow, the gospel was to completely twisted. <clears throat> People were really hurt by this within this movement. Like, use this as an opportunity to share your own testimony with others. Like use this as an opportunity. And especially if you're um, just feeling like, man, Christianity feels like it's being drugged through the mud right now. Like with all these hip documentaries coming out, like use this as an opportunity to share like where you've been, your struggles, your, the, the hardships that you've been through, but how you have found hope in the gospel. Like, you know, if you've never taken the time to share that with the people closest to you or to even create a short video or on your Instagram, or maybe you're a YouTuber or a podcaster, it's like, 
take the time to share um, the true gospel and to share about how Christ has transformed you and how it's not in any man-made rules. It's not in any man-made religion. It's not in being good enough in any of that, um, but it's in Christ and who he is that we have worth and value and purpose and redemption. Um, I just, that's my encouragement to all Christians is to not be afraid, to not be scared, to not be mad, but to use this as an opportunity to further Christ's name. So that's kind of like my my final takeaway thought with it all. Mm -hmm. We would love to hear your thoughts on this. So come hang out with us over on Instagram at Girl Defined and just share your thoughts, share your experience. Were you involved in the program? Where are you at today? What was your take on the docu-series? What do you think about what we shared? Um, Where do you think they got things right, got things wrong? We would love to continue dialoguing about this. And like Bethany said, continuing the conversation and then continuing forward as Christians who say the gospel is where it's at. Like Jesus is our only hope. He is the truth. And let's encourage one another to speak up and share. Um, but yeah. then make sure that we're always going back to the gospel, that that is where mm-hmm. we're finding our firm ground. That is the center. That is the truth. So come hang out with us and let's continue the conversation.